Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we have studied about various operator equations concerning with different linear integral equations and we have in short uh, saw what are the solutions or how we can solve those equations in relation with each other. So let's get more deeper into solving those operator equations. So in this theorem, this is a necessary and sufficient condition for the solvability of first operator equation. So what was the first operator equation? It was for a given um, operator, which is compact linear operator defined from the norm space x to the norm space x, right? And uh, the first operator equation in that case was tx minus lambda x is equal to y, where y was some fixed point member from the norm space x and uh, x here is also a member of the norm space capital X. Lambda is a complex number, right, which is non-zero and this is also given to us. So in this case, with this knowledge, they are saying if T is some compact linear operator on the norm space and lambda is non-zero, then this equation, the first operator equation Tx minus lambda x is equal to y, this would have a solution x, its solution would be this x which satisfies this equation if and only if y is such that now this y is fixed for different equations so now they are saying uh, we are taking this y to be such that when you substitute f into uh, uh, y into this f you get zero and what is this f f is nothing but the solution of the fourth operator equation which is the homogeneous counterpart of t cross f minus lambda f is equal to g where what is f f is a functional defined on the dual space of the normed space x right and what is t cross that is the corresponding adjoint operator relating to this compact linear operator t right so they are saying if uh, f of y is equal to 0 and f satisfies this equation t cross f minus lambda f is equal to 0 in that case this equation 1, tx minus lambda x is equal to y would have a solution. And if this would have a solution, then y would be such that f of y is 0 and the equation 4 would have a solution. This is one thing. Another thing that this theorem tells us uh, that this equation t cross f minus lambda f is equal to 0, the fourth operator equation, this would have trivial solution. What is the trivial solution? If you substitute 0 in place of f, you will be getting 0. So this would obviously be a solution. So they are saying uh, this equation would have a trivial solution. It would have only the trivial solution. That means only this is the solution and we do not have any other solution. Then equation 1 for any given y is solvable. So that means whichever value of y would you uh, give here, you are able to solve this equation number 1. When, Whenever we have the f is equal to 0 as the only solution to this equation number 4. So this is the result. So moving further on to the proof here, what we are required to prove now this is a if and only if uh, condition. So that means we have to prove both ways. So first of all, we will we'll assume that equation one would have a solution. So we are calling that solution as x zero. Now using this solution here, we would like to prove that given f is any solution of equation 4 this we are assuming then we will prove that f of y is equal to 0 so this is for the first part we are assuming that equation 1 has a solution and we are assuming that f is a solution of equation 4 so we are we have to prove that for that particular f when you substitute y onto it we will get a 0 okay so now what we are assuming we are assuming equation 1 has a solution we are calling that to be x0 now corresponding if this is a solution that means it would satisfy this equation so that means y would be equal to t of x0 minus lambda x0 now we can separate out or we can rearrange this term into this form and what is t minus lambda a this is nothing but the operator t lambda so 
Uh, again, we are assuming f to be the solution of equation 4. So that means we have t cross f minus lambda f is equal to 0. And we are to prove that f of y is equal to 0. So let's consider f of y and see what do we have here. f of y is nothing but when you substitute the value of y from here. So it would be t x 0 minus lambda x 0. Now we can separate out the terms. Why? Because what is f? That is a linear functional. So if this is a linear functional, we can separate out the terms here, right? So that means we would have f of t x0 minus f of lambda x0. Now, lambda being a scalar quantity, complex scalar quantity would be taken outside. So this would be lambda f of x0 and this term would be as such. Now we can apply the definition for a joint operator here. According to the definition, we have t cross f of x0 as f of t x 0, right? This is according to the definition of a joint operator. If you do not remember this, please go back and just check what is the definition for a joint operator. So if we use this definition here, we would have in place of f t x 0, we can write as t cross f x 0, right? So uh, what would this thing become? This would become t cross f minus lambda f applied this whole operator thing applied onto x0. Now this thing is equal to 0. Beca why? Because you see we have f as a solution of equation 4 and this is nothing but equation number 4. So therefore we obtain f of y as equal to 0 here. So this, this proves our first part. One way is proved. Now in order to prove the second way, what do we have to do? We'll assume that for uh, a given f which satisfies this equation 4, f of y is equal to 0 is also given to us, then we have to prove that equation 1 has a solution here. So conversely, we'll prove that equation 1 has a solution and we assume that for a given y in equation 1, if f of y is equal to 0 for every solution f of equation 4, that means t cross f minus lambda f is equal to 0 for every f here, and f of y is 0, then we have to prove equation 1 has a solution. So here we'll use the method of contradiction as our strategy always, most of the time. So we assume that if possible, equation 1 has no solution, so that means y is equal to tx minus lambda x is true for no x. So that means no x satisfies this equation. So uh, we are uh, basically we are saying there is no solution corresponding to this equation. So we can rewrite this equation tx minus lambda x as t minus lambda i into x. And what is this? This is the operator t lambda, right? So we have written y is equal to t lambda of x for no x. So that means uh, Basically, y is not equal to t lambda x, right? If this is so, so that means we we can say that y does not belongs to the range space of this operator t lambda, right? This is one thing. And moreover, this range space is closed. Why? Because we have already studied this result that for a compact linear operator on normed space, for every lambda, the range of t lambda that is closed. And moreover, the distance of y to this operator t lambda x. Now because uh, suppose this is the range space t lambda of x. y is some member which is not present in this. So it would lie somewhere outside this space. So whatever is the distance between this and this, the minimum distance that we are calling by delta. So they are saying the space is closed and the dis uh, y, uh, distance of y to t lambda x is delta and that distance is positive. Why? Because uh, we, uh, this that is not exactly equal to zero because y is lying outside this range space, right? t lambda x. So we can make use of this lemma. This is some previous lemma which uh, tells us about the existence of a functional. So it tells us that for a proper closed subspace for of any normed space x, if we have x0 as an arbitrary member which is lying in x minus y such that delta is the distance of x0 from all the members of y, right? So uh, we can say it is the distance between x0 and the set uh, and the space y, right? Then there would exist some functional f tilde 
from the dual space such that the norm of this functional is equal to 1 and when you apply f tilde of um, onto y we would have 0 for every y in the space capital y and moreover the distance uh, of uh, this f tilde from x0 so when you apply the functional f tilde to x0 we have this to be equal to the number delta which is the distance of x0 to the uh, space y so here also we have a closed range space y does not belong to that range space and moreover the distance here we are taking that to be delta so in that case also we will have some functional f tilde in the dual space such that when we apply f tilde onto this element of uh, this given set the given range that is equal to delta right and if we take any element from this space here the range space here that distance is going to be equal to zero so that means when you take any member from that uh, space y that distance is zero but when you take that from x zero that is delta so in this case what is x zero that is simply y now because this element z here belongs to t lambda of x so we can say for some x in this normed space capital X z could could be written as t lambda of x such that f tilde of z is equal to 0 and what is uh, this f tilde of z it is basically you can substitute the value of z here f uh, t lambda uh, x t lambda x and we can expand this t lambda t lambda is nothing but t minus lambda i right so you can substitute here separate out the terms and because this is linear functional so we can split out the terms here so we would have f tilde tx minus f tilde lambda x now here we can apply the definition for functional or uh, not not for functional but for the adjoint operator right so for the adjoint operator t t cross for the uh, compact linear operator t uh, this thing f tilde tx is nothing but f uh, t cross f tilde of x according to the definition for a joint operator and this lambda again is taken outside now this is nothing but the equation number 4 t cross f minus lambda f tilde into x applied onto x right and this is nothing but your equation 4 and it has a solution so this thing is equal to 0 so you have f tilde t lambda x is equal to 0 so this equation here holds for every x in the normed space capital x and since we are taking z as any arbitrary member from the range space of t lambda so therefore we would say f tilde now becomes the solution for equation number 4 why this is so because uh, this thing f tilde of z is actually 0 so this thing is actually 0 so this thing is equal to this thing here so this thing is also equal to 0 if this is equal to 0 that means f tilde here now act as the solution for equation number 4 but however if this is the solution of equation 4 so by the given assumption if this is the solution then it has to satisfy this condition so f tilde of y should be equal to 0 so according to our given condition assumption f tilde of y should be 0 but according to the lemma here we have proved that this is nothing but delta and this delta is a positive quantity so that means here once we are saying it is equal to 0 and once we are saying it is greater than 0 strictly greater than 0 so this thing contradicts itself right so therefore whatever we have assumed is not correct and we have assumed that equation 1 has no solution so this thing is incorrect so what do we say we say equation 1 has a solution so this proves our theorem here so i hope you understood this uh, concept and this solvability result of first operator equation well that is it for this video thank you for watching